Tonight I'm going to photograph a jaw-dropping deep sky object in the night sky known as the Helix Nebula. Like the Pillars of Creation I just shot, this is another iconic astronomy object. It's one of the few nebulae I actually remember seeing in a science textbook as a child. But does it actually look like that? Yes. Wait, where the heck am I? Where's Rudy? Oh, I should have told you, I'm at work. On Saturdays, I basically have the entire building to myself. It's amazing. Fun fact, I used to work in this building on the sixth floor for another company. Now I rent office space for Astro Backyards. <laughs> The Helix Nebula is a planetary nebula. Here's NASA's take on it using the Spitzer Space Telescope and the Galaxy Evolution Explorer. The Helix Nebula is only 650 light years away, not thousands, not millions of light years, just 650 light years. It's one of the closest planetary nebulae to Earth, just a stone's throw away in the constellation Aquarius. This type of nebula is called a planetary nebula, and the reason for that name is because scientists back in the day through the telescopes they were using at the time thought that these nebulae look like the gas giant planets. What were they thinking? They are indeed nebulae and some of the most dynamic looking objects in space. The creation of these nebulae is actually kind of sad. It's literally a dying star and as NASA puts it, throwing a cosmic tantrum. You can put the word cosmic in front of anything and it sounds epic. Okay, I should probably head home now and actually set up my telescope to photograph the Helix Nebula. But before I do, I'm gonna hit you with today's sponsor. What can I say about this company? They had the walnuts to sponsor an astrophotographer that looks nothing like the guys in their ads. I think it's the chips and the lack of weight training. Oh, and the beer. Cuts just hit their five year anniversary and of course they came out with a slick anniversary collection. Why did it take so long for a company to figure out how to make clothes that guys actually want to wear. Their fall collection just dropped and this shirt I'm wearing right now is straight out of the catalog onto my back. Use the link in my description to get 15% off your next cuts order. It supports me and probably increases the chances that they keep sending me stuff. Thank you cuts so much guys for sponsoring this video. Okay, back at home now. My grass is officially dead. Talk about the worst summer weather ever. It's still almost 40 degrees with the Humid X. I'll use the big Esprit 150 refractor telescope to photograph the helix tonight. I could probably use a little more focal length, but there's something to be said about using a rig that's already set up and ready to go from the night before. These days, I usually have a lot of existing images on some of the most popular deep sky objects in the night sky and the Helix Nebula is no exception. I'm pretty sure I intended to add more time to the project last year when I was shooting it, but I just never got around to it. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, the Helix Nebula is another one of those elusive deep sky objects that just kind of skirts the Southern horizon. If you're at a similar latitude to me, 43 degrees North, Chances are right now is the best time to capture the Helix Nebula. I've already seen a few amazing images of the Helix Nebula captured this month by the astrophotography community. The plan is to shoot the Helix Nebula in HA, hydrogen, and O3, oxygen, tonight. This is exactly how I shot the Nebula last year, only that time I was using a one-shot color camera and that Optolong L Extreme filter. This time around, I'm going to use a monochrome camera and shoot through six nanometer narrowband filters independently. For this Nebula and many others, to be honest with you, you can really get away with just shooting it in HA and O3 and build a really impressive full color image. The object will be high enough to shoot by about 10 o'clock and because of where it is and where it starts, I should be able to collect maybe over three hours worth of data on the Helix tonight. Fingers crossed. You're such a good boy.
Well, what can I say? The weather gods screwed me again. Well, not totally, but my three hour imaging window turned into one. So I just swung for the fences and grabbed as much H-alpha as I could to pile onto last year's image. And you know what? It was worth it. 